Hello, I'm Deacon Sabatino Carnazzo, founder of the Institute of Catholic Culture, and I'm blessed to be here with you today through the good work of you Catholic. Today is an important day in the life of the church. Yesterday, we celebrated Latare Sunday, the midpoint of our Lenten journey. Today, therefore, begins the beginning of the second half of Great Lent, in which we journey now to the day of the resurrection. Not so much looking back at the struggle we have endured, but encouraged by the shining light off in the distance, the light of the resurrected Lord. And therefore, the church places before us in her liturgy two important biblical texts. The first from the prophecy of Isaiah and the second from the Gospel of John. In the prophecy of Isaiah, we hear the words of the Lord, I am about to create a new heavens and a new earth. The things of the past shall not be remembered or come to mind. Instead, there will be rejoicing and happiness. Behold, I create Jerusalem anew. Here the church reminds us that we are journeying to the day in which the Lord will restore us to paradise. And we who journey with Mary Magdalene and the other women in the darkness of night and come faithfully to the tomb of Christ will behold the restoration of paradise, which is the Catholic Church. There will we, we will behold the divine gardener, gardening in the garden of life. But to make that journey successfully, the church reminds us of the importance of faith and therefore proclaims in our midst the Gospel of John, the story of the royal official whose son fell ill in the city of Capernaum. Jesus was in Cana of Galilee, about 40 miles away from Capernaum. But the royal official in faith left Capernaum and journeyed to the feet of Jesus in Cana of Galilee and there asked the Savior to return with him to Capernaum to heal his son. What a great image that is for us, an image of faith. But there's something more in this story that is critically important to our journey. And it was critically important to the journey of the royal official and to the healing of his son. There, when the man came to Jesus in Cana of Galilee and invited Jesus to return with him, the Lord rebuked the man saying, unless you people see signs and miracles, you will not believe. But the man in the presence of the Lord came to fullness of faith and began to trust in the word of God. And therefore, Jesus said to him, you may go, for your son will live. And John tells us that the man believed what Jesus had said, and he left and went home to his son to find that his child had been restored to health. We who are making our journey to the day of the resurrection must graduate beyond signs and miracles and come to true faith in the word of God. For no one will come to the day of the resurrection and behold paradise restored in the church who has not first trusted in the word of God and willingly taken up his cross and followed the Savior. No one will come to the restoration of paradise and enter into the kingdom of God who has not first died to this world and fully entrusted his life to Jesus. Here the story of the royal official gives us hope, gives us encouragement, and gives us instruction to place ourselves in faith in the hands of the Lord who can heal us. St. Ambrose tells us that Jesus is the divine physician who has come not so much to heal our bodies, not so much to heal the royal official's son, but to heal our soul. We hear in the Gospels of the healing of the blind and the paralytic. Not so much about physical healings. Yes, Jesus healed those men. But more importantly, he gave them the opportunity to walk again with God and to behold the face of the Lord once again. And so we too also are invited by the church to trust in the Lord, to trust in his word as the royal official did, and to hasten to the feet of the divine physician who will heal our souls and our bodies. 
Let us therefore in faith entrust ourselves here at the beginning of this second half of our Lenten journey to the hand of the Savior, realizing that we will never complete the journey of Lent and traverse the great sea of the fast without trusting completely in him. I invite you to begin the second half of your journey holding fast to the Savior's hand and begging him to heal you and to heal all of us, to prepare us for the great day in which he will create heaven and earth anew and make present in our lives the new Jerusalem, the Catholic Church, in which we will receive every great gift that God has planned for us. May God bless you on this journey, and may we all behold the third day resurrection of Christ our God. Please visit the Institute of Catholic Culture at www.joinicc.org. Www .joinicc may God bless you.